Uh, joining us now to discuss the U.S. response more and some creative ways we could use uh, to understand the direction of the epidemic is Dr. Eric Topol of Scripps Research. Uh, Dr. Topol, thanks for being with us on the phone. Uh, you wrote an op-ed uh, for Medscape uh, just a couple days ago saying this could go down as the worst health crisis and the worst handling of a health crisis in U.S. history. Tell us about that. Right, Meg. Well, I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, the problem is the 45 days, the critical lack of response. So the first patient in the United States was diagnosed in Washington State January 21st, the same day as that in uh, Korea. And we didn't have essentially any testing for the 45 days. And that allowed for this massive spread throughout the country. And so now, even though there's a surge of testing, uh, it's so late and there's been so much uh, extraordinary um, infectivity throughout uh, the U.S. and we're seeing hot zones, of course, in many different cities. So as you pointed out, uh, they, there is a lot of testing right now, but uh, the critical period was missed. And that difference is South Korea contained the outbreak. They flattened the curve very, very quickly. They had very limited number of deaths. They had extensive testing. Uh, whereas we are going to see, uh, of course, uh, a big toll in deaths, and we are the epicenter of this pandemic. What more do you think the U.S. needs to be doing now, uh, even after that missed time? Uh, can we be doing better um, on the response currently? Well, there are many things we can do, of course. We can't have a defeatist attitude. And uh, I think the main thing is we can't just rely on testing because it's so late and because there's such a high rate of people who are either asymptomatic carriers or have indeed been hit with uh, uh, COVID-19. So one of the most uh, important things that we're not doing is uh, digital tracking and tracing. And that is um, to use the uh, things that people wear like their smartwatches or their phones or taking body temperature. These digital tracking tools can tell us where the next cluster of people are starting to have either abnormal resting heart rate, like the study we just uh, uh, launched last week, or uh, body temperature increasing, or other signs before we have another hot zone. And that's something, if we got a large number of Americans uh, involved, we could stay ahead of this um, and, and know where and when uh, something was erupting. Dr. Tobel, uh, Tyler Matheson here. Uh, my question is, uh, what accounts for the fact that we were so slow to get moving on the test? Do you lay it uh, at, the, at the feet of the federal government? Do you lay it at the idea that when the WHO was using a certain kind of test, we rejected the use of that test and chose to go our own way? Uh, and then the second question, if I might, is why has the incidence in China been as low as it has? Is it because they're not testing as many or as well or what? Well, hi, Tyler. I think the first point is that um, we were the only country in the world that rejected the WHO test. And so, as I mentioned, in South Korea, they used that at least initially until they got a quicker turnaround test. And every other country uh, used that test. But we uh, rejected it and never had a test in place that could be done accurately and at scale until uh, right around the 45 day point after the first patient here. Uh, so that was a terrible breach and that accounts and for, will account for a lot of unnecessary deaths going forward because we didn't get ahead of this. Uh, as far as China, uh, the, the, the main point there is they contained their outbreak largely to the uh, province where uh, Wuhan is. And so instead of the broad geographic spread that we're experiencing in the U.S., they went into draconian measures of anti-mobility. And of course, they have ability to do that better than we do uh, in the U.S. Uh, uh, but that led to the containment. Uh, there, there was a big death toll in, the, in China, and there were a large number of cases. But we are going to exceed all of that, perhaps even orders of magnitude because we didn't take the steps by testing, by, con by containing the outbreak in the early days, uh, and then even uh, the social distancing. The other point I wanna make about China is it did practice um, the WHO guidelines uh, as quickly as it was uh, possible, uh, not as quickly as South Korea. 
But so they, they did get into massive testing. They did get into uh, tra tracing contacts uh, and, and isolating them and quarantines and social physical distancing. These are things that we have not done. There hasn't been contact tracing. There hasn't been only in recent days and weeks uh, physical distancing. Uh, and so these are differences between the countries in Asia, not just China, not just South Korea, but Taiwan and Hong Kong um, and, and, and Singapore. So, you know, they're pretty striking differences. Perhaps that's partly because they were SARS right. sensitized in Asia, uh, but it's, there are other factors involved as well. Well, Dr. Topoli, we really appreciate your time and uh, we'd love to stay in touch with you to hear more about that study on wearables that you're doing. Thanks so much for joining us today. Sure, thanks for having me. Bye. Last 45 days of testing. Just, it's amazing, it's too bad. Meg, thanks so much.